So it means that if you want to mitigate those kind of attacks, first of all, you gotta make sure for the first attack, you gotta make sure that the attacker cannot negotiate trunking with the switch, which means you have to disable DTP on the switch ports. And as soon as you enable, uh, so all switch ports connected to endpoints should always be configured as static ports, not as dynamic ports. They should be configured with switch port mode access, which is gonna put the port in static access mode. And by default, when you do that, when you put the port in static access mode, by default, the switch also disables DTP on the port, which means the attacker can no longer negotiate a trunk with the switch. Otherwise, if, if you don't put the, the port in, in static access mode, then you would have to disable DTP manually by using the command switch port no negotiate. But ideally, you're gonna always put the port, the ports connected to the endpoints in static access mode, which is gonna by default disable DTP, so anybody connected on those ports cannot negotiate trunking with the switch. So that's how, well, how you defend against the first variation of the attack. Against the second variation of the attack, you make sure that, first of all, you don't use VLAN 1. That's a common recommendation for a lot of reasons. And then in order to defend against the second variation, variation of the attack, you gotta make sure that uh, the second condition applies. You gotta make sure that the native VLAN uh, on, a, on trunk between switches should never ever be a user VLAN. So what do you have to make sure is that if you use VLAN 10 as a native VLAN on your trunks, you don't use VLAN 10 to also connect endpoints. Because at that point, you open yourself against the second, the second variation of the attack. And then, now it's best practices recommendations. You should always place unused ports into Anaza, into unused VLANs. So like if you have, by default, all ports belong to VLAN 1, and they are also non-shotted, non so anybody can connect, plug to the switch, and be a member of VLAN 1. You don't want that to happen. So you have to take all of your unused ports, attach them to an unused VLAN, so whoever connects in there can't reach anything at all. Because over VLAN 1, it's a lot of control plane traffic happening back and forth. So that's why you don't want to use VLAN 1. And of course, ideally, you'd also want to shut down the layer two ports or which are not used in general. And second recommendation is the one which is of the, the required one to defend against the VLAN hopping attack, is to make sure that you pick up as a native VLAN on all your trunks, a VLAN which is not used as user VLAN, and it's also not VLAN one. Okay, now let's look at our configuration real quick to, to look about to look at DTP. So let's take any of the configured uh, connected. Let's take router three for example. So show CDP neighbors. Router three is connected on switch one port one zero three. Let's go on port one zero three. And this port is configured as a trunk, which means DTP is enabled. Show interfaces, FA103 switch port. It says that negoti negotiation of trunking is on. That means DTP is enabled. You can also verify that by saying show DTP, interface, show DTP, interface, FA, 103. Sometimes this command doesn't display the proper output, but the show interfaces switch port command is always going to tell you if the if DTP is enabled or not. So it is enabled as expected, but sometimes this uh, this output on this command is wrong. Then if you look about router once connection to a switch show cdp neighbors then router one is connected on a gig zero zero interface to switch one's port 101 and that should be an access port 
And because it's a static access port, it means that DTP was by default also disabled. If you say show interfaces, FA101 switch port, then you see in here that DTP negotiation of trunking is off, which means DTP is not running on that port. So nobody can connect a, a, a switch on this port and form a trunk or a host with specific tools on it and run DTP and form a trunk with a switch. You can also say show DTP interface FA101. As I was saying, in some cases, this command presents wrong information. It should say that it's not enabled. And there we go, it states that it's not enabled. It is correct. And then, uh, would it not trunks if you go on switch one and switch to show CDP neighbors? So switch one and switch two are connected over port one through twenty. And if you say show interface is trunk, show interface is trunk, they're gonna make use of the default native VLAN of VLAN one probably. So this is a trunk, a, that one Q trunk, and the native VLAN is as you can see in here VLAN one. So this is not something that you want to use in production network. What you would want is you go on both switches, you configure a VLAN, which you don't use for any other purpose. VLAN, let's say, you, VLAN 101, you name it, name native VLAN, so you know what is the scope of this VLAN, not to be used for any other scopes. This should have been propagated to VTP, but let's confirm that. Show VTP status, show VLAN brief. VLAN 101 showed up. And then you go on both sides of the switch and you say switch port trunk native VLAN 101. There you go, this is a VLAN which is gonna be dedicated to be a native VLAN between switch, sw bet on trunk ports between switches. If you go now and say show interface as trunk, you should see that a native VLAN changed. There we go, to VLAN 101 as a native VLAN on port 1020. So as long as you may, as long as you disable DTP, as long as you put the ports towards endpoints as, as access ports, and DTP gets disabled, and as long as you configure your native VLAN on trunk ports to be a dedicated VLAN used for nothing else, which is not VLAN 1, then you should be good enough to mitigate VLAN hopping attacks.